As an act of self-love and as a beautiful tool of self-discovery, once a year I go on a trip to one of the places on my dream destinations list, all by myself. I do not call it a vacation, because it is not. It is rather an adventure. At least I try my best to make it so. I may even say that solo travel became some kind of a spiritual practice for me. It is when I get to know myself better, learn to set boundaries with people, learn to listen to my body and mind, and acknowledge my needs. Traveling alone became my way to heal. I've learned that spending a proper amount of time in one place is better than doing 5-7 countries in the same time frame, simply because you get a more profound and complete experience in this way. Plus, slow travel is one of the best ways to get immersed into the culture of the country you are visiting. This practice is much deeper than it seems in fact. It's like you learn what your physical and emotional limits are. Sometimes you get amazed by what you are really capable of. And on other days you learn what triggers you or you simply realize that some of your dreams you've been wanting to fulfill are no longer valid and don't bring you joy. In this particular trip, I got reminded once again how much we need nature to survive. We are all connected on the cellular level and we are a part of the greater ecosystem. We need clean air, clean water and food from the earth. We are part of a whole and depend on the other parts to be complete. By spending a significant amount of time in nature and by stepping outside of my comfort zone, I was able to learn so much about myself. And I'm thrilled for you to join me on this adventure, as well as I can't wait to take you to all the magical places of the beautiful country of Costa Rica. I can't say I really prepared for the trip in advance, apart from buying my tickets beforehand. As much as I didn't want to miss out on anything that is there to see, I still wanted to leave a space for the spontaneity. The journey from Dubai to San Jose took me almost 23 hours, with just one quick stop in Zurich. It was an early morning hour and I had about two hours to enjoy my coffee and watch planes take off and land. It was beautiful. I worked in aviation before and for me it still remains such a fascinating moment. Oh, and of course, people watching. I mean, it is so interesting. So many different nationalities, 
I like to observe their manners, behaviors, what they dress like, and everything people related in general. Alright, so here comes the time to board the flight, and just like that we are in San Jose. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my philosophy and how I choose to travel. Over the years, I figured the way that works for me best. It is to mix type of accommodations I stay at. Let's say I would choose a simple bed and breakfast type of place for my first day, and then to feel the maximum joy and excitement, I would treat myself to some beautiful hotel with crisp white sheets and scenic view. I love to use contrast game for that. Then you meet different type of people this way as well, different type of travelers. By staying at a basic type of accommodation or Airbnb or hostel, you get a chance to interact with locals more. You kind of get the experience of both worlds, locals and travelers. And by the way, this is a small hotel called Casa 69, located somewhat next to the downtown San Jose, like 15 minutes walk or so. I stayed there for two nights in a basic queen room. I loved how colorful it was. They had a tiny rooftop where you could do yoga or just enjoy the views. A fish pond, lots of local artwork, plants, and the basic breakfast was also included which was good because on both mornings I had to leave very early and I still had a chance to grab a coffee with fruits. They also served fresh juices and eggs of your choice with bread and butter. This was my first morning in San Jose and at 7 am I was ready at the pickup point for the tour I booked. I have to say I got extremely lucky with the weather, it was sunny and the sky was super clear. First we arrived to the coffee plantation which is called Doca Estate. The fertile volcanic slopes of Costa Rica provide rich soil and the ideal location for many coffee farms. The Doca Estate located on the slopes of the Alajuela province outside of San Jose, produces some of Costa Rica's best coffee beans. Our guide explained to us that when the coffee grains turn red, they are ready to be picked manually. It is a sign that they are ripe and ready to move on to the next step. So after they remove this red thing, they still have to remove another layer that is called pergamino. And also, if you touch a very jelly thing, and how it look when it's uh, with the remove the layer, and then the beans will be ready to be roasted. Oh, the way we export, we export like this. See, unroasted. Costa Rica has rich volcanic soil, different climates and altitudes, which are important factors and determines how the coffee will taste. After a short tour, we were invited to their coffee shop, where we could try different blends and roasts, and of course, enjoy the beautiful grounds and views from the plantation. Our next stop was Poz Volcano. And Poz is one of Costa Rica's most iconic volcanoes, and one of five that remains active today. Poz has three craters and the larger one is a mile wide and filled with bright bubbling water in a spectacular shade of greenish blue. This lake, known as Laguna Caliente, which translates to hot lake, is 900 meters deep and considered world's largest geyser. From the observation deck, you can experience the bubbling of the volcanic lake that fills the gigantic crater. It bubbles and boils and emits sulfurous gases. The second crater is extinct and contains a beautiful lake, Botos Lagoon, surrounded by verdant cloud forests. Our final stop for the day was La Paz Waterfall Gardens. 
It is privately owned ecological attraction featuring five extraordinary waterfalls, the largest animal sanctuary in Costa Rica with over 100 species of animals and 3.5 kilometers of cloud and rainforest hiking trails. It opened in 2000 and it has been housing animals rescued from illegal trafficking. Traditional zoos are outlawed in Costa Rica. That means that all the animals at La Paz Waterfall Gardens have either been confiscated as illegal pets or injured and unable to return to the wild. The mission of the park is to preserve and protect the natural environment of the area. The gardens consist of paved trails throughout the lush rainforest. As you walk along, you spot flocks of colorful tropical birds flying near the falls. The highlight of La Paz Waterfall Gardens is of course the waterfalls. The trails allow you to watch the waterfalls from many different angles. You can see them from above, from the middle and from below. If you have a limited amount of time in San Jose, La Paz Waterfall Gardens is definitely a place to visit. The next day I woke up early and went to the terminal 710 where I boarded the bus to La Fortuna and that is where I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episodes.